1987, RoboCop became a surprise box office hit around the world. Part man, part machine, the high-tech superhero endeared himself to multitudes of movie fans as he introduced moviegoers to the future of law enforcement. Come quietly or there will be trouble. <laughs> Serve the public trust, protect the innocent, uphold the law. He's out! Come on! Peace, officer. This is a bus. RoboCop returns for RoboCop 2, and just in time. The city is again under siege with the police force on strike. Criminals have free reign in the streets. Corporate powerhouse Omni Consumer Products is poised for a hostile takeover of the financially crippled city. And a super addictive, deadly new drug has reared its ugly head, destroying the last remnants of the city's moral fiber. Nuke. Six out of every 10 people in Detroit are addicted to nuke. And uh, it's had an enormous effect on society in Detroit. And it's spreading. It's spreading to cities all over the country. There's only one man that can stop this drug epidemic, and that's a Robocop. Nice shooting. Producer John Davidson, who assembled the team which created Robocop, is again in charge of the crime fighter's machinations. Actor Peter Weller returns as RoboCop and shares some insight as to why the first film and this character in particular has achieved such widespread audience appeal. He's vulnerable because he's not a superhero. Because he's really a human being, I think, is what makes him accessible. I thought it would be a great movie from the time that I read the script. And essentially, uh, we made the same movie that the script was. But whether or not a movie is ha, or gathers a, a major response is um, usually beyond one's control. And except that I read the script and it was great. So, great script if you want to do it. And I am a little bit covetous of the part. Don't you remember me? Alex, it doesn't matter what they've done to you. Touch me. He's essentially a guy who's. Uh, lost his life. Simply put, you know, you can pretend he's a guy with amnesia. Ready for duty, partner? You betcha. Let's go. Murphy becomes RoboCop, and uh, Lewis is the one who really still sees Murphy in him. Nancy Allen also returns in RoboCop 2 as Officer Ann Lewis, Murphy's partner. I believe that Lewis became and still is in this one very much a a mirror of that Murphy. I mean, that's really his identification with his human side. Also back from the original cast are Daniel O'Herlihy as the obsessive head of OCP, Felton Perry as his flunky Johnson, and Robert Doqui as Sergeant Reed. How you feeling, Murphy? A newcomer to the city's grim underworld is Tom Noonan as the twisted, malevolent drug lord, Kane. The nuke for every mood. We'll offer our customers the opportunity to control every aspect of their emotional lives. Director Irvin Kirshner was assigned the complex task of capturing the larger-than-life story of RoboCop 2 on film. It's complex. It's not just physical. I think he's a classic hero in as much as he has a job to do. He has a sense of duty. And the only thing that keeps him going is the fact that he's a cop and, he's, and he can do something while he's alive. And so 
instead of living a life of quiet desperation, or let's say loud desperation, he's, uh, he's doing something about it. Ladies, stay down. It has plenty of action. Things happen. The unexpected happens. And it's all done through characterization, which I think is, is the key to making a film like this work. Weapons, robotics, production design, and special effects. A production of this scale requires perfect synchronization of many different elements. Join us when we return for a behind the scenes look at the making of Robocop 2. Drop the guy, brother. What is RoboCop? Let's see. The hero cop, Alex Murphy, gunned down the line of duty and then reborn via OCP into a cyborg with extraordinary powers. Have a seat. The future of law enforcement. For RoboCop 2, the future of law enforcement takes on a whole new look. The second picture has a new suit. It's been redesigned. It's more of a shiny new car than the uh, first picture's suit. Um, the colors are different. The surfaces are different. They're more reflective. They're harder. The foam rubber surfaces of the first picture have been eliminated. And it's all now fiberglass, like a brand new car. The robo team are the mechanics and the doctors of the suit. The suit's always getting damaged. It's always getting beat up. It's always going through some kind of catharsis. Part of the robo team is always at the shop. Part of the robo team is on the on-set mechanics, the people that dress me. It's not unlike a really high-performance race car team where there are a lot of people pitching in and contributing to making one person look good. Moi. Do you feel all right to, to do it? Yes! It's probably about 15 or 20 pieces in the RoboCop costume. On the very first day of the first picture, it took 12 hours to get Peter Weller into the suit. We are now to the point, and at the end of the second picture, where he can get in and out of that suit in less than 10 minutes. It's a lot more than putting, putting on a suit. The movement all started with a man named Moni Yakin, who's a professor at Juilliard, and he orchestrated this movement. And more or less, we came to what the movement of RoboCop should be together with Paul Verhoeven, you know, and with the assistance of Rob Boutin, who uh, designed the suit. So we all kind of worked on it as a unit. Once he puts that helmet on, once he becomes a robo, you can't really see his eyes. And sometimes I can see an eyelash flutter or something like that. And then that voice comes out. Then get over, creep. It's quite believable. I, mean, I love Peter. We have a great working relationship. And he is fantastic at robo, you know? I mean, I don't know that anyone could play that part better. I wanted to do it right, and I wanted to do it with the vision that I had foreseen. And so a typical robo day is um, I get up around 4.30, 4, 4.30. Then I run six miles on the odd days, four miles on the evens. Um, then I stretch, and then I get to the set, then I warm up, stretching again. Then uh, we start, we put on the suit, test whatever didn't work that night, night before. Then then we go to the set and work. Action. Then I get off, take the suit down. Then uh, on the odd days, I lift weights. And on the even days, I swim. And then I go to bed, and I get about five hours sleep. So that's about that. RoboCop's gleaming armor is in sharp contrast to the harsh, 
bleak cityscape portrayed in the film. This movie, we have sort of a, a gritty approach to the future. We don't, you know, it's not sort of devastation. It's what we like to think of like, more realistic. Peter has a lot of taste. He's an excellent production designer. And he brought sort of a fascist vision of OCP to it with giant red and black flags and giant marble corridors and big doors leading into people's offices. He gave it a real proto-fascist look, which I think is quite, uh, quite appropriate. And it's all based upon what the economic reality of the future that we're projecting <laughs> is going to be. The futuristic firepower used in RoboCop 2 was another challenge facing the film's technical team. Whenever they're principal weapons, we try to make them to something that they've never seen before, no matter what kind of gun it is. In some cases, streamline, we try to, you know, increase capacity, number of rounds it can carry, just make it look different. We compete on, on what we're able to produce, in most cases, produce quickly. At this point, you know, we have a full machine shop on the truck and uh, produce what we need right on the spot. We have a lot of building, you know, we had to build the, the taser gun on this show that, that fires a taser ball, a good-sized ball that hits Robo. This is Hobbs' folding machine gun. It's designed to be disguised as a radio, and essentially when he gets in a jam, he opens it up, and it becomes a machine gun. And it is an actual functioning gun. Nine millimeter. We discussed uh, possibly changing Robo's gun, and it was just amazing how everybody was, oh, no, no, you have to use the same three-shot burst Robo pistol from the last show. And... So between the two shows, we basically went to a double powder load for his gun, and as a result, there'll be a lot more flame in this show from his gun. Robo will need all the firepower he can muster this time around. Known by cast and crew as simply the monster, meet Robocop's would-be replacement. OCP has decided that Robocop is not what they want. He has too much free will. So they have created what they consider an improvement which is a giant mechanical monster called RoboCop 2. But things have become a little rougher out there. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with great pleasure, I give you RoboCop 2. <laughs> things will be a lot quieter with this boy around. Let's step outside. He's a much more formidable opponent than Edge 209 and has a lot greater strength and size and mass than Robocop. Creating the nine foot tall streamlined steel killer was no small task for the film's special effects wizards. Or was it? Unlike two dimensional animation where you have this series of cells, we're working with a three dimensional model that is positioned uh, and repositioned sequentially over uh, you know, numerous single frames of film. There are nine shooting crews creating uh, shots for the picture to create the illusion of this giant monster on the warpath. Stop motion is very time consuming and it's shot one frame at a time and there are 24 frames in a second of film. So an average shooting crew might be able to do one to one and a half shots a week and those shots are two to three seconds in duration. One mistake and you're back to square one. We have eight stop motion puppets. Each one must have you know, 150 moving parts on it and each of those are, are very finely machined by uh, one of the animators in addition to one full-size cane prop, uh, cane monster prop that was built from the waist up. Uh, that would allow us to get shots with uh, Peter Weller in the RoboCop outfit in contact with this uh, with this robot. Cut. Boy, that was terrific. Yeah. Thing of beauty. Great. We'll be back with more about the making of RoboCop 2, the incredible merchandising, 
and a preview of a new hit music video. So don't go away. Freeze, nobody move. With the city on the verge of destruction and the police on strike, RoboCop simply does what he does best. It's not a city operation any longer, it's a corporate one. But they're still not getting what they want, so uh, Robo2, they open on the dilemma of finding them also on strike. Robo never strikes. Are we cops? They have forgotten what their purpose is, which is to serve the people, to be of service. And it's, you know, everyone's gotten very greedy and very, um, you know, fearful. On this picture, he is more self-aware. And he is reprogrammed uh, to be more of a slave to the corporation. And he has to fight against that programming and regain his identity. And I think he defines his identity not only in personal terms, less in personal terms, and more in work terms. I mean, he defines himself as a cop. Uh, he remembers his wife. He remembers his kids. Um, but he defines himself in terms of his work. Robo doesn't make these judgment calls about whether or not it's appropriate to work or not to work. Robo has been programmed to work. That's his job, that's what he does. Crime-fighting cyborg in RoboCop 2 has generated a new wave of enthusiasm and given rise to a flood of RoboCop merchandise, including video games, action figures, clothes, and countless other items. The immense popularity of RoboCop has even inspired a hit music video.
Taking crime fighting into the future and filmmaking into the 90s, RoboCop 2 promises moviegoers a radical extension of the themes, humor, and action of the first picture. There's a lot more uh, special effects uh, action-oriented sequences, uh, sequences with RoboCop 2, the new monster uh, fighting RoboCop, and uh, a lot more stop-motion animation action sequences in the first film. The action stuff is great. The fight sequences are wonderful. There's a wonderful new monster. <laughs> It's a comedy. Come on, we all know it. It's an action science fiction picture. Uh, but it does have uh, social and political uh, satire in it, which is what appeals to me about it. And um, it's, it has fun along the way. The second picture has more comedy than the first. Come on. Fuck! Thank you for not smoking. He is uh, Alex Murphy. And it's very important because this film is about free will. And he has to make difficult choices. And that's the essence of drama. It's cold. They made this to honor him. He's doing his duty, which is the least he can do. And that, I think, makes him a, a heroic figure. Do you think you could ever be a husband to her? Hopefully, you see more of Robo's humanity coming out. Are there more Robocops? How many villains are out there? <laughs> the no! Blasting into a new age of law enforcement, the stage is set for an all-out mega war. RoboCop 2. <laughs>